Hey, thanks for tuning in to Riding Horses today. Colt and I are out here on Willow and Che, and uh, we're both gonna be working on the same thing. We're both trying to get these horses to lope around, walk around, trot around, primarily lope around, and lower their head and their neck. So instead of just rolling this horse up in a bridle and getting their neck round, we're trying to get them to break more at the withers and, and their whole head gets closer to the ground, okay? Not necessarily leaning forward, okay? We're still gonna use our feet to lift the belly, but we want all of this. You see where this mare's head is right now? <clears throat> I'll show you here with my reins and my legs. I'm gonna be asking this mare to get more down there. I want her to think that direction while I'm loping around. Colt, you asked me a question just a second ago after you'd loped that mare some. How do you know <clears throat> when that horse is stiff, was that your question? Yeah, kind of like what to do. How do I know when my horse is stiff and what do I do about it? To me, I gauge how soft a horse is in my hands, okay? It's, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to feel the brace in your horse's neck when you have float in the reins. But as soon as you take the float out of those reins and you make contact at all, and you now have contact on that horse's mouth, you should be able to feel all of the brace between the withers in their ears, in their neck, okay? This is supposed to be the most flexible part of your horse's body. And sometimes when you're riding one around, this is the stiffest part. I need this to be flexible because I'm gonna be able to set a horse up for a specific maneuver if I can put their head in different places, okay? Both these horses wanna lope around naturally with their head up. We're trying to teach them how to find more fluid forward with their head and their neck a little bit lower, okay? So just like you were doing as you're trotting or loping around, we're gonna think about our hands down here closer to our knees. You see how much distance I have? I have enough frame between my hands. My hands are wider apart than my knees, but I'll bring it back to my knee and I can feel that rain just rubbing right over the top of my knee. Okay, that's the spot that I'm going to go to to say to this horse, I want you to drop and break at the withers. Okay, when we're lifting straight up to back these horses up, yes, the nose is still going to roll that way. There we're trying to lift the withers up and shift the weight to the hindquarters to help them horses back up. But that mare right there, we can't really do that on her without making those front two legs like two pogo sticks. <laughs> Okay, and she really wants to just lock them knees when she stops. Okay, so if you want to just go trotting around, you've trotted some, you've already loped some. I haven't trotted or loped this mare at all, so I'm going to get kind of get her warmed up and play around with it a little bit. You go keep working on what you were doing. If you have any questions, you stop and you come ask me. I'm going to keep talking for the camera about what this mare's doing, and every now and then we'll stop and we'll get the camera on you to watch what you're doing because we're both working on the same thing out here, okay? Oh, yeah. Just remember, I'm not fixing all of this or changing all of this with just my reins. Make sure you use your feet with your reins, okay? Sometimes I'm gonna actually ask that horse to get softer off my legs than, I, than just my reins, okay? And as I'm using my legs, I'm kind of getting a lifting effect under their belly, yeah. okay? Your legs are finally getting long enough to hang down past the widest point of that horse's barrel. So now you can lift a little bit, okay? All right, from that spot, as you walk off, see if you can, see if you can get her to walk off like that. And then you go do what you were doing. So as the camera stays on me here, so I'm using my legs, I'm using my reins. <clears throat> my, my reins are gonna drift right over my knee and I want this horse to figure out that it can lower its head. If she would lope around and leave her head like that, I'd let her. This mare's talented enough, she could do it without leaning forward. This mare sometimes wants to act like a giraffe and she wants her head to be in the opposite position of that as she's loping around. So as I'm out here playing around with this, here's what she's starting to figure out. There's a release point down there where he'll just leave me alone. So now sometimes after I've rode her around and worked on this a while, she'll get her head down there and I'll set my hand down and she's like, okay, I'm just gonna leave my head there 
because I know he won't mess with me while my head's right here. So I just kind of walk around for a while, let her be there so she can figure out that's the spot I'm trying to get her to where I'll leave her alone. Now granted, once I speed her up, her head's not going to be that low. She'll pick her head up some on her own. Your hands are gonna be down closer to your knee, Colt. There you go, there you go. There, there. So it's gonna be little changes for you, little changes. That mare might not just put her head down like this roan mare has and leave it this close to the ground. So you're just gonna to have to take little changes in that mare as you go and reward those, okay? All right, I'm just gonna roll this mare up to a trot. As I'm trotting around here, the head comes up. I'm gonna go back to that. I'm gonna go back to that. So you can see when I pick my hands up, my hands come back here just above my knee. I've kind of got some rhythm with my hands and then when I'm trotting if she'll leave her head there and not get any higher than that I will leave her alone again I'm just trying to show this mare she doesn't have to lope around here like a giraffe But show them that's the spot where you'll leave them alone. That's not bad, Colt, for that mare right there. That looks really good right there. Okay, when you get over here to the banners, you're gonna bring her back to a walk, okay? Doing the same thing with your hands. To the walk, to the walk, to the walk. There you go. Now you're at the walk. Now you can, there you go. That head gets down there, you just leave it alone. But if it comes up, you can ask her to lower that head. You can ask her to lower her head right there. Pick your reins up, just at a walk. There you go, turn loose of it. Good job. If she'll leave her head there or lower, you can just kind of leave her alone and walk her around for a minute. So watch me here for a second, Colt. As I roll up to a lope right here, if, if your horse is struggling to get her head down there, okay, if she's struggling to get her head down there, I'm not gonna lope, but just a circle here so I can show you. This mare's doing pretty good for me right here, but let's say she wasn't. When I bring her to a walk right here, now that I'm at the walk, I'm really gonna exaggerate it and say, I might not be able to get your head very low at a lope, but by golly, when I get you to a walk, I sure can, okay? And it's just, it's just little bits at a time, not trying to make a big deal out of any of it but just trying to show them there's a spot down there where we will leave them alone. And if they'll lower at the withers, lower their head and their neck and lope around, they can find, in my opinion, some more fluid forward motion than when they're loping with their, their head at a neck at a 45 degree angle coming out of their shoulders because all that energy is coming this way then. Okay. I thought that looked pretty good. Again, you can't compare these two horses, okay? It's easier for this horse to travel around with their head lower than it is that one. So you're gonna have to work out it a little bit harder and show a little bit more grace at times with that one. Maybe even take a smaller change in that horse. I might get a bigger change out of this horse. But that right there, that's how you build it right there, bud. Just remember, get your hands down here lower, closer to your knee, okay? There you go, just like that. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back here. The camera can stay on me. And I'm just, I'll just lope a couple circles here. So the hardest thing for you, Colt, is to watch this mare while you're riding that one. Because you're going to watch this mare lope like that, and you're going to go ask that horse to do the same thing. And it's two different horses, okay? Yeah, I'd like all my horses to lope like this right here. But I can't ask that horse you're sitting on to be this one. So I got to take what, I'm, what I've got and I've got to build it into the best I can possibly get that horse. It might not be what this horse can do. It might be less, it might be more. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk right here and I'm gonna let you go lope a circle. Which way were you just going? You were going right, let's go ahead and go left. So I'll let the camera go with Colt. And we'll watch Colt this time. Again, this is something that is relative for every horse, guys. What one horse can do doesn't necessarily mean the next horse can do. I've got to figure out what the horse I'm sitting on is capable of and just help them reach their best potential. Colt, that looked super. That to me on that horse, that looks amazing to me on that horse, bud. Yeah, there you go, pumpkin. Great job. Okay, while you're doing that with your hands, we're gonna let her come back to a walk. Now really say, you might not have got it where I wanted it at a lope, but you darn sure can at a walk. Exaggerate some more. There you go, there you go. <clears throat> there you go. So almost every time I come to a walk, I will exaggerate what I was asking for at a lope and maybe didn't even get. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, why don't you sit right here? I thought that looked super cold. That was, that was so good for that little horse. I'll lope this horse to the left and we'll see what she looks like. So my reins, my reins are long enough that if she, if she wants to lower her head, she'll be able to get it down there. So I can tell you already, this mare is more fluid loping to the right than she is here to the left. She doesn't have the same forward motion here loping left that she did there she's she's getting a little closer to what she was on the right to me once those horses kind of find that fluid forward motion you'll kind of see their heads stay put This mare just needs to spend some time loping out here to find that same, there we go, that same fluid here going to the left. There we go. Can you see how much smoother it is now? Takes a lot of a lot of time and a lot of repetition. 
Again, at the walk, I'm really going to exaggerate it. Might even exaggerate my legs a little bit. See, that's what I'm after right there. Good job. Good job. Well, obviously, we both could be out here really helping these horses find some fluid forward motion as we're working on that. We both saw some progress in these horses today. You feel a difference in that mare? Yeah. We just got a lot of hours to invest, okay? Again, trying to find the difference between lifting and this down here saying, I want, I want more of that and just figure out how that can help our horses while we're walking around, trotting around, loping around, all of that. Dad, I have a question. Yes, sir. Why do you lift on some horses but don't on other horses? It all depends to me on how they travel, okay? Some horses, like this mare, when you lift so much on her, she forgets how to lope forward, okay? And then <clears throat> she's got this short little choppy stride and them front legs are, are as stiff as a board. They're like a pogo stick, mm -hmm. okay? That mare needs to stride out a little bit and lope forward and figure out how to reach with her hind feet up underneath herself and not just be loping around like this because we're lifting so much, okay? Now, I might crawl on one of those two horses over there and be able to lift. In fact, I can even lift on this one. But if I lift too much on this one, I'll cause the same thing to happen on this mare that that'll happen on that mare it just doesn't happen as quick this mare's default reaction to everything you do is to elevate her head and get real stiff with her front legs okay so also what do you build whenever you lift what do you build the idea of lifting is to be able to feel that horse lift this direction okay if you're trying to lift the belly lift the back and potentially be able to shift the weight from the front feet back to the back feet. So why, why would you want to do that? Would you want to do that while you're loping around? Yeah, you want to be able to lift a horse while you're loping around because if you can lift them up, <clears throat> what do you do when you back up? Don't you lift? Yeah. Okay, if you think about the feel that you have when you back up, <clears throat> where the withers are going, what the hind feet are doing, what the hips doing, you got to have that same thing to be able to stop. So I, while I'm loping around, if I can have that lifting effect while I'm loping, then my horse is going to be more prepared and positioned to stop while they're loping. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We're not really worrying so much about the stop today as we're just trying to get these horses to figure out how to break at the withers, lower their head, and just go lope forward. Okay. Once a horse gets soft from here forward, then when you go to pull it on them, drawing them into the ground and all that stuff, they don't brace on you so much and you can teach them horses how to get in the ground a lot smoother and not lock them front legs. There's been times where you've stopped that mare and I could have put a basketball underneath your butt because yeah. <laughs> she would bounce you up out of the saddle. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the idea. Great job today, bud. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Riding Horses. I hope this is something that uh, maybe can benefit you and what you're working on. Maybe just help your horse slope a little bit smoother, a little bit more forward as you're out there riding. So thank you again. Go to carrycoon.com for more information about our horses for sale, our clinics, our lessons, and everything else we're doing.